pathophysiology of multiple sclerosis. So the pathophysiology, multiple sclerosis is a progressive inflammatory demyelinating disorder of the central nervous system. So um, progressive meaning that it continues to get worse. Um, and inflammatory meaning um, it is known to be an autoimmune disorder. Um, progressive. And it involves the central nervous system. And is it is a demyelinating disorder. Okay, so because it is a demyelinating disorder, we're going to talk about, we're going to start by a discussion of the oligodendrites. Now the oligodendrites are glial cells, so glial cells are cells that support the, um, the functioning of neurons that exist only in the central nervous system. And these oligodendrites, um, you know, they have their cell body and their nucleus here, and then their cell membrane extends out and wraps around in successive layers around a nerve axon. And it wraps around, you know, dozens of times, and it wraps so tightly that it sort of squeezes out all the cytoplasm. So myelin is really just layers, you know, let me draw this in a color that we can see. It's layer upon layer of cell membranes from the oligodendrite cells. Now, <clears throat> we know that with patients with multiple sclerosis, they um, develop lesions and in on their myelin sheaths and their myelin sheaths start to break down they start to look like Swiss cheese and eventually they can lose large sections of their myelin sheaths they may lose large sections of their myelin sheaths so you will, we will have a bare axon now remember the function of a myelin sheath is to speed up the um, speed of conduction of an action potential, right? And it does this because the um, action potential is able to skip from node of Ron VA to node of Ron VA. Um, and there are a lot of mechanisms behind why this is so much more efficient, but, um, but it does speed up the impulse. So when you have large holes and breakdown of the myelin sheath, then you are going to decrease the speed of the conduction of the action potential. So it's going to decrease action potential speed. And actually, because, remember, in the node of Ron VA, we have a large collection of voltage-gated sodium channels. And this allows um, the propagation of the action potential to jump from the node of Ron VA to node, node of Ron VA. But underneath the myelin, there are no um, or very few voltage-gated sodium channels. So if we um, remove a lot of the myelin sheath and underneath the myelin sheath there are no um, voltage-gated sodium channels, we can actually stop the action potential completely. So depending on how much damage there is, um, the action potential may stop altogether and no action potentials can be sent, sent down that axon at all. Okay, so we know that the that multiple sclerosis is a disease that causes demyelination in the central nervous system, but how does that occur? Well, um, it is a process of, um, of, it is an autoimmune process in which there are proteins that reside on the myelin from the oligodendrites. So these are specific to the myelin of the oligodendrites. They do not, these proteins do not exist on the myelin of Schwann cells that are out in the peripheral nervous system. So this is specific to the myelin in the central nervous system only. And these myelin proteins um, are attacked, are seen as non-self and they're attacked by macrophages. They got a big macrophage cell that is attacking these and it's eating them up. And then it's traveling over to a T cell and a B cell 
We got a B cell and a T cell. And when they receive these protein fragments from the macrophage, they get turned on. And the T cell is going to do a whole bunch of things. We're going to talk about this more when we get to, the, um, to talking about the uh, the immune system. But the T cells get turned on, and they start to turn. They start to release a whole bunch of cytokines, and these crank up inflammation. The B cells, when they are um, triggered by the macrophage um, with the presented antigen are going to turn into plasma cells. And plasma cells, if you remember, what they do is they crank out a whole bunch of immune globulins. And then the immune globulins are going to attack and damage. Uh, they're going to attack the proteins. And all of this is going to cause, all of this is going to add together the immune globulins, the cytokines, and the macrophages, they're all going to work together to break down this myelin sheath. Okay, so what causes this to happen to begin with? Why does the body all of a sudden start attacking its own tissues? Well, this is somewhat of a mystery. We don't understand autoimmune diseases very well in general, but there are three main theories. Um, one theory is that there is um, a viral infection that starts the initial um, that starts the initial inflammation and once the inflammation gets going then um, the autoimmune disease continues and viruses that we have um, have considered as the culprits are Epstein-Barr virus um, human herpes virus 6 which is very different than the human herpes virus that causes um, venereal diseases and um, the herpes virus that, that causes canker sores. This is one that is specific to the central nervous system. Um, interestingly enough, Epstein-Barr virus has been a theory for a long time and it's very difficult to prove because we know that people with multiple sclerosis, 100% of people with multiple sclerosis have, um, we can prove have been exposed to Epstein-Barr virus. But that doesn't necessarily prove anything because it's so common in the general population. Usually about 80 to 90 percent of people, of healthy people, have had Epstein-Barr virus at one time. HHV6 is similarly difficult to prove. Um, so we think that there may be a viral component. Um, and there also may be an ongoing um, viral encephalitis that may continue so the, the viral disease may be continuing to sort of add fire to this, um, to this inflammatory process. Um, another theory is, is that there is an inherited component, that there is a defect in the, um, in the myelin protein that is um, central in the disease pathology. Um, a third theory is that um, that there is a um, there is a link to vitamin D deficiency. Now this theory is supported by the fact that the disease is much more common in northern climates. So like Greenland it is extremely common Canada, Europe, and North America, it is fairly common. And then, you know, in Africa um, and Central America, it is much more rare. So the reality is it may be a combination of these three factors, or it may, you know, it may be a different factor in, in uh, different individuals. Now, I talked about multiple sclerosis being a central nervous system disease. Now, remember, the central nervous system is made up of brain and spine. So, you know, picture the big brain up here, and you can have lesions in various places in the brain as well. So this here, we have the brain, we have um, the midbrain, we have um, the brain stem, and then we have the spine, and we can have lesions anywhere here. Okay, so that brings me to have there are sort of three categories of MS. One is called spinal MS. 
and one is called and then the second is called cerebellar MS and then the third is mixed and the mixed can involve spine cerebellum or the center, or the uh, cerebral cortex uh, the thalamus or the midbrain as well so with MS you you will see these large areas of plaque buildup and interestingly enough this is a progressive disease but it's also characterized by um, by progression and remission so sometimes for some reason the disease will get better for a while so the inflammation will cool down and the oligodendrites will replace the myelin and the um, symptoms will dissipate for a period of time so there are often periods of remission now we've noticed with the disease that people who develop significant disability reach kind of a point of no return and this seems to happen when people lose the ability to to walk and become wheelchair bound once they get to that point for some reason or other the disease continues to progress and there are very few remissions after that time